Hello and good evening students and welcome back to Global Online Platform. This is Chandni Swarnakar and today we are going to cover the John Dryden, okay? The very important, prominent writer, John Dryden of Restoration Period, okay? So, you can get my lectures at 9pm on a daily basis. But video mein aage badne se pehle mein aapko bada deti hu. December exam mein jail friend ke liye smart preparation karna hooga. Uske liye English literature ka complete course johai global nana aapko liye leke rai hai. Joki exam oriented hoogi. Exam ke latest pattern difficulty level ke according se banaya gaya hai. Isme aapko full syllabus video lectures milenge. Jis mein short and smart trick ke saath aapke saare concept clear ho jayenge. Iske saath aapko full syllabus notes downloadable PDF format mein avail karaya jayega. Jis se aap apne mobile laptop mein download karke par sakte ho. उसके साथ आपको फुल मॉक टेस्ट मिलेंगे जिसे एज इट इज क्वेश्चन एग्जाम में पूछे जाते हैं मॉक टेस्ट आपके फाइनल प्रिपरेशन बहुत हेल्प करता है तो गिविन कॉन्टैक्ट नंबर पे कॉन्टैक्ट करके आप इसे ज्वाइन कर सकते हो और सबसे अच्छी बात इस कोर्स की ये है दैट यू आर गोइंग टू गेट फॉर कंप्लीट पेपर वन कोर्स फॉर फ्री सो यू आर सेविंग थर्टी सिक्स हंड्रेड रुपीज या ओके ना वीडियो में आगे बढ़ते हैं तो ग्लोबल ऑनलाइन आपको आप डाउनलोड कर सकते हो सोर्स सेक्शन पे सोर्स सेक्शन पे जाओगे आपको सारे कोर्सेज की जानकारी यहाँ से मिल जाएगी सर्च बार में जाकर के डायरेक्टली कोर्स का नाम लिखोगे तो कोर्स का ओवरव्यू आपको सा, आपके सामने आ जाएगा इसकी ड्यूरेशन इसकी फीस सब कुछ आपको मिल जाएगी कंटेंट सेक्शन पे जाते हो तो सक, आ, क्लिक करते हो तो यूनिट वाइज जो है आपको फोल्डर्स मिलेंगे अवेलेबल मिलेंगे हर एक यूनिट में थ्री लेक्चर्स इवेल्युएशन नोट्स मॉक टेस्ट एन एम आपको मिलेंगे इसके अलावा आपको कुछ भी पढ़ने की जरूरत नहीं है और इसके साथ अगर आप ग्लोबल ऑनलाइन पेड कोर्स को ज्वाइन करते हो तो आपको व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप में भी ऐड किया जाएगा जहाँ पे हर एक सेशन की पीडीएफ आप लोगों के साथ में प्रोवाइड करवाई जाएगी ओके नाउ मूविंग ऑन टू आर नेक्स्ट मेन टॉपिक दैट इज जॉन ड्राइडन सो फर्स्ट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड द ड्रेशन ऑफ जॉन ड्राइडन यू ऑल्सो नीड टू रिमेंबर दैट ओके सो जॉन ड्राइडन वॉज बॉर्न इन सिक्सटीन एंड डाइड इन सेवनटीन ओके नाउ नेक्स्ट सम ऑफ द फैक्ट्स अबाउट जॉन ड्राइडन दैट ही वॉज इंग्लिश ही वॉज एन इंग्लिश पोएट लिटरेरी क्रिटिक बिकॉज ही रॉक सम ऑफ द क्रिटिसिजम ओके वर्कस ऑफ क्रिटिसिजम ही वॉज ऑल्सो अ ट्रांसलेटर प्ले राइट ओके यू विल गेट टू नो वेरी सून ना ही वॉज अपॉइंटेड एज फर्स्ट पोएट लॉरेट ओके इंग्लैंड फर्स्ट पोएट लॉरेट वो द अचीवमेंट ही गॉट नाउ ही ऑन एड विथ Now, uh, several other writers has commented a positive comment that John Dryden uh, got, and uh, Sir Walter, for example, Sir Walter Scott said, called him glorious John. Okay, so these are the comments that you must remember. For example, Matthew Arnold famously dismissed them as classic of our prose, classics of our prose. Okay, second comment, third one is Johnson also noted, however, that he is therefore. With all his variety of excellence, not often pathetic, and had so little sensibility of the power of infusions, purely natural, and that he did not esteem them in others. Simplicity gave him no pleasure. He said, "He is therefore, with all his variety of excellence, not often pathetic, and had so little sensibility of the power of infusions, purely natural." That he did not esteem them in others. Simplicity gave him no pleasure. Okay, so these are the some of the comments. That let's uh, cover the other comments. Alexander said, Alexander Pope said, John Dryden's poetry is a shining example of the elegance and refinement of the Restoration period. What it says, John Dryden's poetry is a shining example of the elegance and refinement of the Restoration period. Next, what T. S. Eliot said about him. So Dryden's contribution to English literature is immeasurable. He played a pivotal role in the development of heroic couplets and neoclassical ideals. So according to T. S. Eliot, you cannot even measure Dryden's contribution to English literature. Okay? He says Dryden's contribution to English literature is immeasurable. He played a pivotal role in the development of heroic couplets and neoclassical ideals. Right now, let's cover the Samuel Taylor Coleridge. What he said, we should know. So, uh, particularly, he talks about uh, an essay that John Dryden has written. Okay, an essay of dramatic poesy. So he said, an essay of dramatic poesy are insightful and foundational in the understanding of the aesthetics of his time. So, if you really want to. Uh, get the foundation, or do you really want to understand the aesthetics of his time, uh, John Dryden's time? So do read an essay of dramatic poesy, said by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Okay, 
So now let's cover the works of uh, John Dryden. So the first work is The Wild Gallant. Okay. So the first work is what? The Wild Gallant. It's a restoration comedy. First you need to understand it's a comedy. Now uh, he was actually um, said that it was, the, it was his first attempt in dramatic poesy. He also stated in his preface saying the first attempt I made in dramatic poetry. Okay. And um, it was his earliest place like was Dryden's earliest place and it was written in prose except for the prologue and the epilogue which theatre formerly Gibbon's Tennis Court in 1663. So he wrote uh, the whole play in prose but uh, except the prologue and the epilogue and it was performed by Gibbon's Tennis performed in Gibbon's uh, tennis court in 1663 okay so these are the facts related to the wild gallant you must remember now moving on to the next work the rival ladies okay the rival ladies i hope you all know about tragic comedy what is tragic comedy because earlier it was tragedy uh, on one side and comedy on the other side okay it was actually uh, 6064 work okay originally performed by whom the king's company at the theater royal then in bridge street okay originally performed by the king's company at the theater royal there in bridge street okay so um by whom it was performed you must remember then the third work that is it we had to uh, we actually have to remember about that particular work then moving on to the indian queen the indian queen it was a play so play by robert howard so it was a collaborated work uh, robert howard sir robert howard and john dryden collaborated together worked together and produced this particular work the queen indian queen okay it was a heroic tragedy right we all know this particular work now moving on to the next the M indian emperor or the conquest of mexico by the spaniards being the sequel of the indian queen okay so you must remember that it was uh, it it was not it is the sequel of the indian queen okay so this is the sequel of indian queen the emperor indian emperor or the conquest of mexico by the spaniards being the sequel of the indian queen so it's a restoration era stage play it's a heroic drama so these are the facts you have to mug up now the play has been considered a defining work in the subgenre of heroic drama so when it when we talk about heroic drama it is a very um, influential work okay in which rhymed heroic tragedy comes into full being so rhyme heroic tragedy uh, earlier it was not there but in this particular work Rhyme heroic tragedy comes into full being. Okay. Now moving on. The Tempest. I hope you all know about Tempest. So what the difference is. The Tempest is written by. Written by John Dryden. And Devenant. Okay. It was um, two writers work. Dryden and Devenant play. Now Tempest ko jo hai. And the Enchanted Island bhi keh rahe hai. It is also known as the Enchanted Island. It's a comedy. But when it comes to the Tempest, we all know that Shakespeare has also written the Tempest. But it's an adaptation, okay, adaptation of Shakespeare's comedy, The Tempest, by John Dryden and William Devenant. Okay, so you must remember that. Now the next one, which one? The State of Innocence. I hope uh, your innocence is um, still there. Now it was originally intended as a libretto, okay, libretto, to an opera. But what happens, uh, uh, it becomes a work, poem, we can say. The work is a rhymed adaptation of John Milton's epic poem, Paradise Lost. So it's a work, adaptation, adapted work it is. Uh, adaptation of whom, which work? John Milton's epic poem, Paradise Lost. And also retells the biblical story of the fall of man. Okay, you all know the Bible story, uh, the story of the fall of man. So it actually retells the story. Now, the state of innocence is a five-act drama. First thing, it's a five-act drama and chiefly focusing on the books 2, 4, 8 and 9 of Milton's poem. So it has five act, five acts and chiefly focusing on book 2, book 4, book 8 and 9 of Milton's poem. So this... Um, 
specifically you need to remember this book's names okay the numbering now what is happening here so the dialogue and the soliloquy are written mostly in heroic couplets although one section is written in blank verse so dialogue and soliloquies were uh, written in heroic couplets but one section was there it was written in blank verse okay now moving on to the next work i hope you all uh, have must have heard about aurangzeb so there is a another work that was written by john dryden which is aurangzeb but the spelling is quite different okay so it's a restoration drama and written in 1675 based on um, uh, on the figure of aurangzeb the uh, historical figure and also it also talks about the reigning uh, of mughal emperor of india his brother murad baksha which is also known as morad and their father shah jahan which was uh, the emperor at the time okay he talks about so many other characters like aurangzeb was there um, his brother murad baksha then shah jahan it covers all of them okay now uh, the next one all for love it's a play so uh, whenever we talk about john dryden we actually uh, come to know that it's a very famous work or for love we should read it it has another title as well the world well lost and its questions aate hain so um, you need to remember now it's a 1677 heroic drama and uh, it was dedicated to all of denby so dedication is also very important it was uh, written in blank verse एंड बेसिकली ड्राइडन की जो ना एक तरह की अटैम्प्ट थी सीरियस ड्रामा लिखने की ठीक है एंड ड्राइडन पार्ट टू री इनविगोरेट सीरियस ड्रामा ओके सो इट वॉज एन अटैम्प्ट टू डू दैट इट इज़ अ ट्रेजडी यू ऑल्सो नीड टू रिमेंबर ना शेक्सपियर के वर्क से बहुत ज़्यादा इंस्पायर होते दिखते हैं हमें जॉर्ज ड्राइडन तो आप देखोगे शेक्सपियर का भी एक वर्क है एंटनी एंड क्लियो पार्ट्रा ओके सो लास्ट में ना एंटनी एंड क्लियो पार्ट्रा वॉज हैविंग last hours of the lives uh, because they were actually about to die okay so wahan us time ke uh, jo bhi cheeze hui unko actually me imitate kiya hai is particular work mein okay which particular work this one all for love okay so you do need to remember that now the next one oedipus oedipus complex you know right oedipus rex oedipus complex um whenever we talk about oedipus rex we have to know the uh, the meaning of oedipus complex so it's a dryden play don't get confused it's a heroic drama and sophocles ka jo oedipus rex hai theek hai uska adaptation hai ab adaptation hua hai but john dryden and nathaniel dono ne milke kiya hai so you need to remember agar kisi writer ne kisi writer ke sath agar koi work likha hai to both the writers are important okay so oedipus jo hai dryden uh, का प्ले है एक हीरोइक ड्रामा है इट्स एन अडेप्टेशन ऑफ सॉफिकल्स और रिपसरेक्स रिटन बाय जॉन राइडन एंड नाथनल ली मूविंग ऑन सी ट्रॉयलर्स एंड क्रसीडा और ट्रुथ फाउंड टू लेट सो बहुत ज़्यादा लेट से अगर सच का पता चले तो इट्स अ वेस्ट राइट सो ट्रॉयलर्स एंड क्रसीडा जो है 1679 का ट्रेजिडी है एक तरह का एक प्ले है uh, अब आप ध्यान रखिएगा जॉनरा क्या है कौन सा है सो इट्स आल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फर्स्ट स्टेड बाय दी फर्स्ट स्टेड बाय द ड्यूक्स कंपनी एट द डॉस गार्डन थिएटर इन लंदन सो दिस इज नॉट स्टेड दिस इज स्टेज्ड ओके सो फर्स्ट स्टेज बाय ड्यूक्स कंपनी एट द डॉस गार्डन थिएटर इन लंदन अब जैसा मैंने बोला विलियम शेक्सपियर के वर्क से बहुत ज़्यादा इंस्पायर्ड लगते हैं ये तो विलियम शेक्सपियर का 1602 का एक प्ले है ट्रॉयलर सन कसीदा जो कि ट्रोजन वॉर्स पे सेट था सेटिंग जो थी वॉज सेट ड्यूरिंग द ट्रोजन वॉर्स सो ट्रॉयलर कसीदा और ट्रूथ फाउंड टू लेट इट वॉज अ री वर्किंग ऑफ विलियम शेक्सपियर सिक्सटीन प्ले ट्रॉयलर सन कसीड ओके सो यू हैव टू फोकस ना वन थिंग इट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग for you to know it there has a uh, a plot a prologue okay spoken by shakespeare's ghost so shakespeare ka ek ghost hai jo ki play mein aata hai prologue mein aur prologue mein hi wo sari cheeze detail mein batata hai ki maine kyun adaptation reworking start ki okay so that uh, that is uh, something very funny 
but still very important for you to know. Now moving on, Estria Redux. Okay, it was written in 1660. Estria Redux was written in 1660, and um, uh, look, Royalist uh, Pangrick is. basically hota hai kya hai? Ek formal uh, letter hota hai, letter ya speech. Speech hota hai basically. Letter is not a correct word. Okay. So, ek tarah ki speech thi jo Dryden ne likhi. Uh, to welcome the new regime of King Charles II, a royalist Penrick, uh, Penigric, in which Dryden welcomes the new regime of King Charles II. King Charles, you know that King Charles ke aane se restoration jo hai, uh, fir se sari restore, uh, restore hui, so se restoration period. Ke naam se hai, se jante hai. Now moving on, NL, this is, uh, wait, yeah, this is not uh, annual, this is. NS okay NS Mirabilis so it's a poem uh, it was published in 1667 and um, see this poem mein na, uh, basically uh, great plug of London jo hai, usko bhi gaya. Us event ko bhi aap dekhoge, aap kar paoge. see or interesting thing ye hai ki the great plague of London se bachne ke liye jahan wo jate hai na, uh, Escapism के तरह जो भी place उन्होंने use किया वहीं पे उन्होंने ये work जो लिखी है ये poem इन्होंने लिखी है ठीक है तो एक major event को जो है cover करता है जो कि है the Great Plague of London okay now uh, the poem contains uh, 1216 lines of verse ठीक है जो कि arranged की गई है arranged in 304 quatrains okay so it has 1216 lines of verse and arranged in 304 quatrains okay now each line consists of 10 syllables each line consists of what each line consists of 10 syllables and each quatrain follow an a a b a b rhyme scheme so you need to remember this and a pattern referred to as a decasyllabic quatrain so you need to be very specific with this data and you need to remember that now the last work is the epsilon and Echitophel okay it's a satirical poem so um i hope you all know that uh, john dryden has written a lot of poems so you need to remember the uh, uh, remember every uh, poem i think because they will ask you because he is a very important writer from the net perspective also from the age perspective also from the perspective of uh, the prominent work he has written okay in every aspect he is very important now, Epsilon and Echitophel is a satirical poem that you need to remember and it was written in heroic couplets, published in 1981. So, it's a satirical poem written in heroic couplets and published in 1981. Now, moving on to the last slide. Um, it actually tells the biblical tale. Biblical tales uh, specifically means that a story from the Bible, okay? So, it tells the biblical tale of the rebellion of Absalom against King David. So, Absalom was very upset with uh, King David and wanted to defeat him. So, Absalom actually rebelled against whom? Against King David. So, one thing is also uh, there that you need to remember that it has references of the popish plot. I mean, I have uh, actually discussed the popish plot uh, earlier in um, previous lectures, I think. So, popish plot was... Uh, uh, was taken place in 1678 so it has the reference of it okay now epsilon and Echitophel is generally acknowledged as the finest political satire in the english language so when it comes to political satire in the english language epsilon and Echitophel actually generally acknowledged okay it has been acknowledged and still acknowledged as the finest political satire in the english language right so that is it you need to remember and uh, we very particular we'll also cover some of the writers we'll cover the literary criticism uh, other writers where we'll cover the john dryden's very important works okay so thank you so much uh, for your patience and we'll meet in the next lecture and also keep on revising things that is it and all the very best